What's going on, y'all? Fred Johnson coming back at you today from Orlando, Florida. I'm going to revisit the hall pass request that we created in the last video. So some more tech tips, te teacher tips from some of my years of experience. So today we're going to talk about uh, the hall pass request that we created. Uh, so what I've always done uh, is create a hall pass request via Google Form. Add, and I showed this in the last video, add first name, last name, period. What's your destination as an option and a section for what's the purpose of your trip. You then provide the link to your students uh, via your learning management system or QR code or however you're providing this. When students fill it out, it comes to you in responses. Um, or in, if you click on the sheet, which is my preferred method, it will open in a Google Sheet. From here... Uh, you're starting to realize, well, Here's is this going to be beneficial for me? So I'm looking at this, and it's still just a bunch of names and numbers, and it's not very organized. So uh, what I had originally done was I would take this list and sort it alphabetically. You know, I would go to Data. I would select everything by clicking on this um, corner between the A and the 1. This will select everything at once. I would click Data. Sort sheet, or rather sort range, and I would do an advanced sort, and then I would say yes, it has a header row, and I want to sort by last name. Add another column in case there's two people with the same last name, then sort by first name. This gives me my names in alphabetical order. These are fake names, by the way, so don't worry. Um, but problem is this works really well up until a new person fills out the form. And it doesn't uh, update that. That new response would then show up at the bottom all the way down here, and I'm no longer in alphabetical order. So what is the solution if I want it to auto-alphabetize itself? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new tab. I'm going to go back to the original tab, which is called Form Responses 1, and I'm going to copy and paste the headings, that very first row, I'm going to copy and paste that because that's going to be the same. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sort. So I'll come in here and I'll put equals sort parentheses, asking me what do I want to sort. Then I'll come back here and I'll select not the titles, because I'm not going to sort the titles, but starting in the second row all the way down. And I can go all the way down to the bottom or just adjust that second number in the column. But in this case, as an example, we'll just go all the way to the bottom. Add some more. And press comma. So I can adjust this number because I know more responses are coming in. I might put it to 999 or some number that... I know will not be reached. So now it's going to sort A2 to G99 to G in that first sheet. Uh, how does it want to sort it? Well, what column? So you would think, okay, I'm looking by last name, that's column D, but it actually goes by numbers here. So I'm going to look column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. Last name is the fourth column. So after that first comma, I'm going to put 4. And then you put true or false. True for alphabetical, false for reverse. And then if I have two students with the same last name, I want to go to column three, column C, which is column three. I'll also put true. And I can keep going if I have more, but I just want to sort by last name and first name. So I did equals sort parentheses, and then I selected the area, and I put a comma. And then I chose which column, not the column letter, but I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, true, 3, true. Separated by commas, close parentheses, press enter. And now it sorts alphabetically all of my students. And as a new one pops in and it populates here on the original, when it comes to my new sheet, it will already be alphabetized for me. So now I can quickly see Emily Anderson has already been three times. As soon as she fills out that next one, it auto-populates in here, and I can do a quick, okay, now you've gone four times. 
And then I can go ahead and format this because when I format on the original sheet, the formatting doesn't come in with the new responses, but in the second sheet it will. So if I wanted to bold my text and add some columns around it, maybe add some color or however I want to play this, I can go ahead and do so. And now new responses don't affect the formatting that I've done here. Other thing I'll do is it kind of drives me crazy the way this timestamp is. I don't like that. So I'm going to go to format, number, excuse me, format, number, and wow, struggling. And then I'll choose a better date method. I don't even like any of these date methods. So I'll go to custom, date, and time. And I would prefer this to be written out like so. Don't necessarily need the seconds on there. So I can manually delete the seconds, click apply, expand the column. And now uh, if Emily does reach that limit for her hall passes, I can, and I can say, well, you've been five times already. And she'll say, um, no, I haven't, you're not. And I can say, well, you went February 14th at 149, February 23rd at 1242, March 4th at 1128. So it's a quick, easy way to keep track of where everyone is and when, and now it will auto-alphabetize for me. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to apply this in your classroom. If you have any suggestions, questions, comments, concerns, queries, ideas, please throw them my way in the comments. Please like, comment, subscribe, and have an awesome rest of your day.